Meantime, we are now joined by a very special guest. Can we call him a legend? I think we're going to. Legendary investor Peter Lynch. He's with us from Boston this morning to share his perspective on the economy, markets, and the work he's doing for the Catholic Schools Foundation. Peter, of course, is the vice chairman of Fidelity Management and Research and advisory board member of Fidelity Funds. From 1977 to 1990, he managed the Magellan Fund, growing it from, you ready for this, $20 million dollars to $14 billion in 1990 at the time of his retirement. Buy what you know is what Peter taught us, and it's so nice to see you this morning, Peter. Good to be here. So let's talk about buy what you know. I'm so curious these days how you're thinking about the economy. Well, I think people, they're investing in individual stocks. It's, it's sad they're careful when they buy a refrigerator or an airplane flight. Or they're careful with their money, and they'll hear about a stock on the bus and they'll put five or $10,000 on it. They have no idea what they do. So you really got to be careful. Look at the company, look at the balance sheet. What is the reason the stock should be higher? The sucker's going up, it's not a good reason. Is your sense though that the style of investing uh, that you pioneered is still doable and winnable today? Well, I think looking for something different, looking for something that's a good story. I mean, who would have guessed TJX, a local company, would have gone up 50-fold, or Stop and Shop would go up 10-fold, or, or Analog Devices, or NVIDIA. I couldn't pronounce NVIDIA. So you, you have to find a company that's either a turnaround or a company that's going to grow, like Panera or you know, Family Dollar Stores. I'm not saying that buys now, but that, you know, Sears has rolled over, so, you know, so in Kmart's rolled over, IBM slowed down. But we've had new companies come along. I mean, that's the nature. You have to be looking for new companies and look at the balance sheet. If you can add five and five and get reasonably close to 10, you should be able to look at a balance sheet and say, here's two depressed companies. They've gone from 50 to three. One company's got three million in cash and no debt. One's got three million in debt, no cash. Which one are you going to buy? I mean, that's that, not too hard to do. Peter, I, I watched watch you closely because I was in the business back then. And I don't know. Do you remember how many SNL? From mutuals to stock trade that you made just buku bucks on back then. I mean, I don't yeah. know if you, I don't know if you missed any of those, and they were all big winners. <laughs> uh, they, they, they're all big well, winners. They were all big winners back then. I just, what do you think of the financial sector right now and what happened? We saw with First Republic, and uh, I, I'd just yeah. like to get your insight there since you you were so good at well, that sector. You know, we had a terrible financial crisis in '99 to one. I think every. Almost every major bank in Texas went under. Bank of New England, one of the oldest banks in the country, went under. It's like, you know, you know, in 08, 09, the banks were doing these no-doc loans and second mortgages and home improvement loans, and people were, were buying boats with it. Now the banks are being much more careful. So we've gone through other crises. Some banks will go under. You know, 400 went under after 08, 09. Now we have stress tests. I think the banking system has improved. There'll be some companies going under. That's the, that's the nature of it. You know, it's nothing like, imagine 1980-81, we had double-digit inflation, double-digit unemployment, and people were the Japanese were going to take over the world. I mean, we were hopeless. I mean, you know, there's always something to worry about. I'd really, in my over 50 years of doing this, I, I think I'd be worried if there was, you know, somebody didn't bring up something to worry about. That's well, you, the nature you of the business. A, I, I because I'm a Reagan guy, you know, and I was there. I started it at Merrill in 1981. So huh. I remember, I remember what happened. Yeah. I remember my feelings in 1981, and I remember my feelings, how wow. I felt by 1985. Ugly. And you had a huh. tailwind. I had a tailwind because of what we did. We're not going to do that again. We're not going to cut taxes. We're not going to uh, stimulate the private sector. We're, we're kind of headed the other way. Did, did you have a tailwind? Is, will we ever have a tailwind again with this generation? A, well, we've had 13 recessions since World War II, and we've had 13 recoveries. Maybe we're going to have one. If this is a recession, it's probably the most predicted one ever. You know, I never know when we're going to go. I, I'd love to know the future. I'd, I think I'd give, it would help. I'd be a better investor. I'd pay five extra dollars for next year's Wall Street Journal. It would really help. Right. I cannot predict the future, but this one, this recession is so expected, so predicted. Maybe it's coming. I don't know. Peter, I have a question about story stocks and, and buying what you know. You know, I, I remember reading about an interview with you many, many years ago where you were talking about walking through a mall and being able to touch the merchandise huh. and feel it and see right. it. 
And then I think to myself that we now live in this digital age, this digital universe, and how difficult it may be to walk through the store and, and feel it and see it in the same way. This is especially true of crypto and other things which are almost an abstraction and how you think about investing in those things today. I mean, you know, Warren Buffett oh, for a long time stayed away from technology in part because I think he felt it was an abstraction. Yeah. But he, he bought Apple. Apple was not that hard to understand. I mean, how dumb was I? My daughter has bought us an iPod, you know, for, I think, $250. I think I'm making profit on that for my music. And they're making only $50 on their computers. Not, not doing very well. But then nice balance sheet. And, you know, I never, I should have done some work in Apple. Amazing. That's not a complicated company. The iPod financed the iPhone. I mean, here's a great story. Look at analog devices. Look at Teradyne. Look at TJ Maxx. Look at the turnaround at Target. I mean, you can see these companies coming. Look at Wingstop. I, I tried those wings. Wow. I'm not saying that buys now, but they're out there. Look for a company that's going to do well in the next few years, five years. Look at their balance sheet or look at a turnaround. When companies go from crappy to semi-crappy, the stock goes up. When it goes from semi-crappy to good, they go up. When business gets to be terrific, get out. Hey, Peter, uh, Ron Barron, another investor, is a huge fan of yours. He wrote me to say that he's passing on the Spotify conference call right now because he wanted to watch you and hear what you had to say. He also huh. said that he spoke with you recently about SpaceX. Ron's an investor in SpaceX. Are, are you an investor? Is this one of those companies that you're talking about? And what did you think about the, the explosion of the rocket last week? I'm, an, I'm definitely an investor. I, I own stocks this minute. I'm going to research stocks this afternoon. I'll research them tomorrow. It's very entertaining. It's very enjoyable. But you have to do some homework. And you have to look at companies that other people aren't looking at. To look at companies that are depressed. But make sure my great experience with the textile industry there's a great expression in the textile industry. It's always dark before pitch black. So because business is terrible, it can get terrible squared. So wait till things get better. Some signs of things getting better. You have an edge. You might be in that industry where things are starting to improve. There's a lot of positive coming along. The price of oil has gone from over 100. It's now 80. One year out is 78. Natural gas has gone from $8 in MCF to 230. I mean, we've added over 6 million jobs and 21, 22, over a million jobs in the first quarter. A lot of people at the bottom part of the economy have had significant raises. We get minimum wage, many states up to 22. These people deserve it. You know, so I think you know, there's a lot of positive, a lot of negatives. I don't know what the market's going to do next year. But if you need the money, if you're sending somebody to college in a year or you're buying a house in a year, you're not a good investor. One or two years, you can flip a coin. But is SpaceX Market's a company that you're ten percent since in? World War Two? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Is SpaceX a company that you're invested in? Did you say Baytex? I, I, uh, SpaceX. SpaceX. Uh, the, the Elon Musk. I'm sorry. I may, I may not be speaking clearly. SpaceX, the Elon Musk company. I, I can't comment on what I own, I, but I, I tend to own small cap or out of favor companies. He said other people I'm looking at. Right. And you know. P that, Peter, that, something I, that a lot, let a I lot couldn't of pronounce folks... NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been a huge stock. I wish I could right. have pronounced it and done the research. <laughs> Peter, uh, a lot of folks do own, uh, and some have gotten burned and some made a lot of money on Bitcoin. What do you think? I mean, I can't pronounce crypto. I mean, you know, it, uh, <laughs> you know that, that tends um, to me, I, I can spell it. I definitely can pronounce it. But you, I mean, you haven't, you, what no homework is going to be, I have no idea. That, that, that's not your thing. You haven't done any homework on it. You know how it works. You, you understand blockchain, read any. I do anything? understand, and I know how it works. You, know, you do? Absolutely. I know there's yeah. a halving coming. There's what? You said there's a halving Bitcoin. company. Coming. Yeah, there is a halving company, but you don't own any. I don't own Bitcoin, no. Okay. Or, or, or Ethercoin or. Joe's coin or Becky's coin or Andrew's coin. Right? <laughs> um, but, but I'll tell you something you're doing that's uh, very cool, which is uh, you're, you're trying to raise some money uh, for, 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 for the Catholic School Foundation. Tell us yeah. about what you're doing. Well, for, la for 13 years I ran my channel. You're nice to comment on that. But 33 years I've been raising money for our, there's 37 inner city Catholic schools in Boston. You know, these 11,000, over 11,000 children, 70 percent of color, over 75 percent are single parent families. These are people working two jobs or one job. And they're still only slightly above the poverty line. 
And unfortunately, our schools aren't free. So we give scholarships to these needy kids. We have a 2% dropout rate. Incredible success story. And we're trying to raise more money to keep these children in school. Our schools have done a great job for 150 years of helping immigrants. They speak over 30 languages, 3-0 in our schools. These are great families. They need our schools. But unfortunately, you know, we need help. So we helped 4,000 children last year. Right. It's a great cause. Thank you. Uh, Peter, we want to uh, thank you for joining us this morning. It's always great to talk are, to are you. you still, are you still Come on back. Are you still a screaming eagle, Peter? Or, or you, uh, you, you talk Wharton or, or Boston College? Which, which you remember more, more fondly? Uh, every screaming eagle I knew well, was fanatic. I was lucky. I went to a great public school. I went to, my father took sick when I was seven, died when I was 10. My mother was intellectually challenged. But I grew up in Newton. You know, I right. still had great there. public schools. So we've given over... $5 million to the Boston Public Schools. We're doing lots of programs to help public schools. The most important thing, 90% of your brain is developed by age six. We really got to help hmm. young children get a positive start. That's the key to life. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. Peter, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Terrific. When we come back, investors getting set for the first mega cap earnings. Those come after the bell tonight. We're going to talk about some key metrics to watch. Stay tuned. You're watching.